Okay, so let's try to set this LabVIEW VI up to get data from the Arduino serial port, but without using the links subsystem. So the first thing is to find the serial block that we're going to use. So here under Instrument I.O. Serial, this is the main block that does it for us, the serial read block. So we need things to set that up. So the first thing we have to do is tell it which serial port we want to listen to. So we can do that here using the Visa resource name. And if we do right click and create control, then that puts this on our front panel and we can pick the COM port that our Arduino is on. In general, we want to set up the serial port with more things, not just the serial port name. We need to set the baud rate at a minimum and there are other parameters that you might need to check. So uh, there's a block here in the same place, serial configure port that combines these things together. So we're actually going to use that one, break this line here, and we'll run the visa resource name into here. There are other things to set that we can set the baud rate, the number of bits, parity, and all these things, but really in modern serial ports, about the only one people use is the baud rate. So I'll create a control for that. Look at the baud rate here on the front panel and we can set that to match our Arduino's baud rate. And then that creates the Visa resource name that we can run into the serial read. All right, so there we have our serial ports configured. Now the data comes into the serial port and it comes out as a text string. So there's a read buffer here and I can create an indicator for that and that'll show what's in, that's received by the serial port. I can make that a little bigger just to make sure I'm seeing all of the data. And that's the basic setup to get this to work. Um, you can see I still have a broken arrow here. So there's an error and it's this. Um, one last thing we have to set up here under byte count. I usually just create a constant for this. Uh, it's how many bytes to read. It also reads to the end of the line, so it doesn't seem to be very sensitive. I'm going to put 16 in there. Uh, you can probably change that, but you have to put something. Now it's happy. I'm going to put a while loop around this so it runs constantly. Here I'll use the while loop with the button, and I'm going to stretch it around this stuff. And now I can test it. So if I set this up for COM11, 9600 baud, now it will listen to my Arduino. So let's get the Arduino running and see what's next. So this example is just the uh, built-in example from Examples Basics Read Analog Voltage. So I'm using that one. It reads the voltage on analog pin 0 and prints it out in the units of voltage to the serial port at 9600 baud. So I'm going to put that into my Arduino Uno on COM11, upload the program, and now I can check the serial monitor, and it's printing something out. I've got a light sensor here, so darker, lighter, darker, lighter. So this is the data over the serial ports, printing out text to the serial port, and that's what the LabVIEW program is going to catch. So I have to close this window to free up the port, and now we can test our LabVIEW code. So let's just make sure COM11 9600 hit run, and you can see it's printing out the number. If I cover it up, darker, lighter, runs pretty fast. So good, we've got the number. One thing we'll notice if we hit stop, if I click on this, you can see this little icon means that the serial port is held by LabVIEW. It's its own Visa resource. And that means you can't reprogram the Arduino and you might have trouble using other LabVIEW VIs as long as this thing is held. So what we need to do is close the serial port when we're done. And that's from here. 
instrument IO serial close. So we can put that out here, and we only want to close when it's done. So I'll run this through there. And now if we run this VI, it's still, it's still working, number still changing. Um, and if I hit stop up here, kills the program, still holds the port. But if I hit stop here, it does a clean exit and releases the port. So make sure you put the stop in here, and when you're running the program, use the stop button rather than the kill stop sign. Okay, so the last thing to check here is we have this data. It's a string, which isn't a number. It's just the text, so we can read it, um, but you can't use it in a gauge or a graph or anything like that. So here we're going to use a string function to parse the string. It has to read the 2.26 characters and turn that into a number 2.26. So those are built in for LabVIEW under the string number string conversion, and then there are lots of options. This is the one, frac fractional exponential string to number, because we've got a decimal point in our data. So we put that one down, down here, and that takes the same string that we were printing and creates a number. I'll just create an indicator here, and we'll print that one out to the screen. And so, same number, but this is a number that we could graph. So just to eliminate the confusion, I'm going to get rid of the string part and keep all of this. And then I'm going to call this done. So if you got to here, it's working. For the last demonstration here is something that we often do in my labs that doesn't work in this case. And that is to slow down the while loop with this setup that you've seen in other labs. Okay, if I paste it over here, this takes the timing number from this front panel control and slows down the while loop. It makes the while loop take a certain amount of time. So if you want to take data every tenth of a second, we can put a hundred millisecond delay and that'll give us the approximate sample rate that we want. If we run this, it works. It's showing the number, but I've just covered up the number. I covered up the sensor now, and the number doesn't change. What happens is the printout from, this, from the Arduino is going in to the buffer on our Windows computer, and then this VI is reading the buffer. So it takes a very long time. Now it finally went down and I've stopped covering it up. So you get this big delay because it only reads one at a time and it's reading one every tenth of a second. So the data is coming in faster than it's being read. So this delay doesn't work the way we want it to work. So there are some options if you want a delay. You can clear the buffer. There's a buffer clear block we could do. So we could clear the buffer and then read the buffer. But then it actually takes a little logic. You have to clear the buffer and then check when the buffer is full again and then read it. Otherwise, you'll read the empty buffer. So it's a little bit of a hassle. There are some other things we could do. We could parse the string differently so that it throws out more of the data. None of them are really trivial. The easiest thing, I think, is to just not bother with this. That's one solution. Um, and if you need a delay, it's very easy to put a delay in the Arduino code. So if we need a 100 millisecond delay, we use the delay function for 100 milliseconds. If we put that code in, now if we run this, you can see this is changing less often. Maybe you can't see, but it is changing every hundredth of a second now instead of before. As before it was running as fast as it could go. So that's the delay is down here, and that's one way to do it. Okay, so that's everything I needed to show you for getting the lab going. We're going to take this little block of code and put it into our VI from two weeks ago, the Boolean lab, and use this number signal here instead of the simulated signal, and we will take it up in the next video.